So what we're going to talk about next is the cancellation tokens that we have available inside our handlers. And our iRequest handler, when we implement this particular interface, creates a handle method that has two parameters. One's the query object that we create above here. And the other one is this cancellation token, which I've completely ignored up until now. Now, I'll say it now that we're not actually going to be using these in our application. But I do want to demonstrate what they are and what they're going to be used for. And I'm sure you've been on a website before where you've made a request for a page and it just sits there supposedly loading. Eventually you get bored and you either click the stop button or maybe you hit a 5 to reload the page or you do something else to abort the request. And users kind of expect a page to load pretty much instantly these, these days. And when it doesn't, a quick refresh can be very tempting. And this is all well and good for the user, but what about our poor server? If a user is hitting a refresh button five times, then that user's hitting or sending the request five times to our server. Now, if the user is waiting a significant amount of time for a response, that means our server is probably working quite hard to go and get the response, or there's something else going on. But if they've refreshed the page, then that, that original request has been aborted, but our server doesn't know about it, and it's going to continue that request. Or at least that's how it stands at this moment in time. And if our server goes ahead and completes this request, even though the user's aborted the request, then it's just going to throw the results of that request away and do absolutely nothing with them. So let's take a look at how we can use this. And the details handler that we have here is not a particularly good example because the find async request, it's a little bit complicated to use the cancellation token in here. So I'm just going to open up the list request that we have. And if I hover over the to list async, then we can see that this takes a parameter of the cancellation token. And this means if it receives a, a cancellation request or the request has been aborted, then it's got the ability to cancel the request. Now it's going to be difficult to demonstrate because if I pass my cancellation token in here and then I go to Postman and I click send, it's kind of difficult to hit the cancel request button to see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some delay into my list request so that we can see these cancellation tokens and what they actually do. And whilst my list method here, if it receives a cancellation token, because the request has been aborted, then it's going to automatically cancel this request. We can also make use of these cancellation tokens manually as well, and that's what I'll do in this case. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a try-catch block inside here, and I'm going to add a for loop and say for var i equals 0, and then i is less than 10, and i++ plus plus as the iterator. And then what I'll do is I'm going to call it say to the cancellation token throw if cancellation requested and if it hasn't then I'm going to say await and say task dot delay and I'll delay by a second so I'll pay I'll put in 1000 there and then I'll pass in the cancellation token to this method because the delay also can take a cancellation token as a second parameter and what I also want to do is I'm just going to log the information here into our terminal window. So I'm just going to bring in the iLogger into our handler as well. And we can inject this in here. So I'll say iLogger. And we need to give the iLogger the name of the class that we we want to log from. And in this case, it's going to be our list class. Now, just make sure that we bring in Microsoft Extensions Login and we'll call it logger and just hover over the list and make sure that we're logging against application.activities.list and that's the case in here. Now I'm just going to need to initialize this field from parameter and once again I'll take out this dot and then I can go down into my for loop here and each time this executes I'll say logger.loginformation 
and I'll use the dollar in front of the quotes and say task and then in curly brackets I'll put in I has completed and using the string formatter in this way will mean that I gets replaced with whatever the number is of the iteration we're currently on and what I also want to do is catch what we're throwing from our cancellation token here so I'm going to say catch exception ex and I'm going to add a condition onto this and say when ex is task cancelled exception and inside the catch and I'll need to bring in system in this case as well and inside the catch I'm just going to say logger dot log information and I'm going to say task was cancelled and I'm just going to open up the terminal and go back to postman and I'm just going to resend the request to go and get the activities and now this time it's going to take a lot longer because we added the delay and if I go over to my logs I can see that the tasks are going up and once they're complete then it finishes but if I go back and I resend this request again and I go to my logs and I can see task 0, task 1 and then I click cancel request I can see that my operation is still going ahead even though I've aborted that request so even though I've used the cancellation token here my handler has got no way of knowing if the request was aborted because our client, in this case the postman request is making an a request to our API controller is not directly making a request to our handler so in order to actually do something with a cancellation token we also need to do something inside our activities controller here and what we can do is we can pass in a, a cancellation token into our, our API methods and I'll say cancellation token and just call it CT and need to spell cancellation correct as well and just bring in system.threading and then what I can do to our mediator send command our mediator send method can take a second parameter after our request which is the cancellation token so just after our new list query I'm just going to pass in the cancellation token and if we go back to, well I'll just open up the terminal first of all, make sure the API has restarted and if we go back to Postman, I'll make the request again make sure this is running, and it is and if I click on cancel what I'll see this time is I get my exception because we're throwing the cancellation token but what we see is that it doesn't go all the way up to the end this time, it goes up to task 3 I cancelled the request and this time it stops running. So cancellation tokens can be useful and we could use them in every method in every circumstance in this application but it's going to be very hard to see the effects of them because we're not going to make any types of queries that are going to take a long time to execute. So it's going to be hard to see the benefits of them and in order to keep our application as simple as we can even though it's not going to end up that simple it's just easier just to not use cancellation tokens they're not essential they're optional and I'm just going to clean up after myself but I did just want to show you what they are so that if you do want to use them in an application then this is kind of how you should do it and what I'm going to do is just clean up the cancellation token from the API controller method go back to my list and just remove this code I added inside here and I'll remove the cancellation token from there and I'll also remove the logger from the constructor in here as well so I'll just remove the private field and just remove the logger from there as well so like I say we're not actually going to use them in our application but I did just want to briefly discuss them and what we're going to look at next is adding another handler and the next one we're going to create is the one to create new activities.